Okay, this is God's word. We're in Romans chapter 1, therefore God gave them up. Lust of the... Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, and he's going to get more specific about this as time goes on here. Because they traded... Mm -hmm. and worship the mm -hmm. and worship and serve the creation my husband's creator who is the love close um, we, we usually use this often use this word anyway to what God does for us when he does good things for us we say he, I've been some of them out he says this oh, several times for those who are poor in spirit, or those who mourn, or those who are um, persecuted for his name's sake. Or, uh, no. Um, it's sort of a synonym for happy sometimes. And when we, when we praise and worship God, we're said to do this to God because it's, it brings joy to God's heart. We... Uh, B L B L E B L E S <laughs> You're gonna go ah you think B L E S S <laughs> Blessed How long? Forever. Forever. Amen, yep. All right, so they've exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And the worship can serve the creature, usually themselves, rather than the creator who's blessed forever. Amen. And then here's today's verse. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of people that hate this verse for this reason. There it is again. No, uh, this, remember, we, we had this word earlier. Um, and and the, the clue I usually give, I don't know if I gave it in here or not, is if somebody does something good, like in school even, we will, we will say, okay, we're going to give them a word that starts with H. And we'll even have, sometimes they'll have courses for really good students. And they call them, yeah, but if there's another word that starts with an H. Honors. Yeah, honors. Dishonoring. Yeah, dis, dishonorable. And this means the same as lust. It can be a good word. <clears throat> it, it really means really strong desires. And if we have a really strong desire for God, that's a good thing. This is a good thing. But, this is in the but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Really, really strong, and he's talking about sexual desires here, but uh, um, uh, some people will we'll, we'll, we'll use this word to talk about people who, no, that's a good guess. Some people will use, will use this word when they're talking about an intense love for something like sports. Like, Man, he has a something for sports. He really, really loves it. No? Uh, he has a... Some people are really into music. We'll say they have a this for music, or they're really into dance. They have a this for dance. They have a. It's what they're all about. It's just they're really. Passion. There you go. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. In this context, it's really the equivalent of sexual lust. And then He gives an example for their. Um, this is really. Um, God created two of these at the very beginning when he created man. And this is one of them. Uh-huh. For their, uh, their women. And here's that traded word again. Their women. Exchange. And that's really close. This is relations. It's not normal. It's a word. To, there you go. Natural relations. For those that are merry, merry, quiet. Remember that poem, Mary, Mary, quiet. You don't remember that? Uh, well, sometimes we will fuss at kids because they're being this. They're being difficult. They're being, uh, it really means against or opposed to. No, uh, good guess, but that's not right. Um, uh, opposed to or against, let's see, those that are, it starts with a C-O-N-T. That's really close. C O N T R A A con con no. C O N T R A 
are no, I only got one more letter. <laughs> C O N T R A R Y. Contrary. Contrary. You're not familiar with that word? I know, but every time you hear it, it's in a more of a written way. Like right. when you're explaining evidence, but then there's a point. That's right. There you go. It's a contrary. On the contrary. There, there's, that's it. it means on the other side, opposed to. And, and so this is opposed to, and this is coming from the same root here. Did you get that word yet? This word is coming from the same root as this. Did you get it yet? Contrary to what? <clears throat> Not normal. What was this word? Yeah, contrary to nature. Yeah, nature. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For the women exchanged natural relations for those who are contrary to nature. And and he's talking about lesbianism here. It's, it's going to be very clear in the next verse because he's going to talk about men burning with, in lust for one another. But, but he starts from talking about lesbianism. And when he says natural relations, what he means is God created us. He created us male and female. And he's, it's very clear who the boys are and who the girls are. He, made us, he gave us bodies so we could see who the boys are and who the girls are as soon as they're born. And, uh, and, 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 and he created us that way so we could have natural relations, sexual relations, in a marriage relationship and have kids. That's the way he designed it. It's, it's, design. it's a beautiful design. But they... They make it into, they pervert it. They, the women, instead of having natural relations with men, they give up natural relations. They exchange them for those that are contrary to nature, and they, uh, they take up lesbianism. And the world hates this verse. And more and more, the sexual revolution is overtaking the world. Yes, they will try to. They'll try to say, "Well, this doesn't really mean that," or, or this. They'll say things like, "Well, this was for that day, but things are different now," and stuff like that. But it's not, and God's word is true. Um, well, because then you're getting back to the verse of seven four, where they're changing the truth for a lie. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's exactly what's happening. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's very good. Well said. Uh, right now, right this minute, the United States Senate has has passed a bill that the House already passed. The so called, yeah, they call it the respect for marriage, but it's really disrespect for marriage because they're trying to say that this is normal, this is okay, there's nothing wrong with this, and. And the Supreme Court's already said that a few years ago in the Obergefell decision, but what they're doing here is giving themselves a chance to go after people who don't agree with them. That's what's going on. It's very, it's very sad, and a lot of Christians are going to pay a price for this one, I'm afraid, because what, the, what they're doing, you know, there were three conservative men in the Senate who offered a, an amendment to this thing, and they said, look, well, they, they, they were three conservative men who were trying to do the right thing, who offered an amendment to what the Senate passed, but the, the Senate turned it down. They would not accept those amendments. But what they were saying is, look, the way you've got this worded, it's going to give, it's going to give people who are in the sexual revolution, homosexuals, lesbians, bisexuals, it's, it's going to give them the opportunity to sue people who don't, who don't want to celebrate their, their sexual perversion. You see what I'm saying? So th this has gone on already. Like, you know, th there have been people like make cakes, wedding cakes, and they'll say, look, we, we buy a wedding cake, but we're not going to celebrate ourselves what we believe is wrong, and we don't believe it's right for two men to marry or two women to marry. We don't believe it. see this being in business. It's going to hit hard. It's really going to hit business people hard, Christian business people, especially if they're being in, in a business where they could be tried to force to celebrate this sexual sin. That, but that is, now, I don't know. Because my dad's businessman, I don't know how it's gonna. I mean, he's just selling cars, so you don't yeah. have to show it. But I, yeah, I wouldn't think it might not. It might not affect him, but it will affect a lot of Christians. It it may affect Christian schools, especially if they're getting any money from the government, because the government will say you have got to do this now. See what I'm saying? We don't. We don't. So we're fine. We're fine. I think for now. But the, but the, but I'm just we Christians need to be prepared because it's it's coming. You know, it's not going to be easy. And. Uh, and we got to decide, are we going to stand on God's word or are we going to go with the culture and the world? And I'm telling you, even if we don't make up our minds, even that God's word is true, there's this really 
heavy push away from God's word that, that will logically make sense to a lot of people. And because they don't want to cause trouble, they don't want, oh, I don't want anybody upset with me. So they want to go along with it, but it's a bad mistake. And, uh, but you've got even people like, you know, Barack Obama and Joe Biden just a few years ago, both of them said they were opposed to gay marriage. And now they both flip flopped, of course, because the culture's kind of gone on and they didn't have any really strong convictions. Yeah. Yeah, but but there may come a time when God will want you to stand firm and tell the truth, yeah. even though people are going to criticize you. Even though you know, and, it's, and I understand you understand what you're saying. I tell you something. I heard a guy say one time. Greg Kokel said this. I thought this is pretty good. He said, uh, if somebody asks you where you stand on these issues, he said, he said what you might say is, look, let me ask you a question first. Do you consider yourself a tolerant person? Do you consider yourself, because they're real big on tolerance. You know, they, 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 they say we're being intolerant. Okay, do you consider yourself to be tolerant? Uh, in other words, if somebody says something disagrees with you, do you get upset or are you okay with that? You know, see what I'm saying? And then, and then say now, you know, if, if they say, well, no, I'm very tolerant, then okay, I'll tell you what I believe. And that's just, that's just one way of approaching yeah, it. Kind of, and, and most of them aren't tolerant. They, they start calling us names if, if we take a stand. But I'm, I'm just feel like, I need to take a stand the best I know how with God's word, God's truth. And, and if people get upset, they can get upset. I know I'm not a hater. They may accuse me of being a hater and a bigot and a homophobe. I know that I love these people. I want what's best for them. And that's why I've got to tell them the truth about the sin. So anyway, that's where I am. Well, let's see if we can memorize this. For this reason, for this reason, for this reason. And the reason is because they exchange the truth about God for a lie. For this reason. What did I say it again? Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for this reason is one of those clues that you need to go back and read the first part. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. God gave them up. We saw that in verse 24. To dishonorable passions. To dishonorable passions. Dishonorable, dishonorable passions. For their women exchange natural relations. For their women exchange natural relations. For those that are contrary to nature. I'll help you if you forget. For this reason, God gave them passions. Good. And he gives you an example. For their women. For their women. Oops. <laughs> I gave too much of it. For their women what? For their women exchange natural relations. That's it. For those that are, and that word that you said you've heard in logical arguments and things. Okay, good. That's it. Very good. All right. I'm going to pray. You guys, anything you want to say before I pray? Father, thank you for Isaac. Thank you for Cole. Thank you for this time we have together in your word. Lord, we want to be men who stand firm in your word on your truth. We don't want to waver. We don't want to be pushed aside. We don't want to be shaken we want to uh, be wise and we want to be gracious and kind and loving but we certainly want to be uh, courageous and bold when it comes to standing on your truth because we know that people who ignore your truth pay a heavy consequence for it they just can't see it coming and when we know that uh, there, there's going to be a bad outcome for people who shake their fist in your face for people who say that they don't like your word for people who want to substitute their own foolish thinking uh, for those who exchange the truth about you for a lie. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd help us to be able to help them see more clearly what the truth is and what the consequences are of ignoring you. Lord, we're living in a very, very weird day from my perspective. It's just amazing that we've come to this place where we as a nation have elected so many officials who are willing to, to uh, disagree with you. They're willing to go along with the world's way of thinking. Sad. But Lord, I pray that you might give us repentance and awakening. I pray you'd raise up godly men to stand firm in, in public places and help us to know how to encourage them and support them. So please be merciful to us. We need you, of course. And help us to have thick skins as your kids so that people call us names because we won't agree with them. 
that we'll just be okay and keep our focus on you and not uh, not let them shake us. Pray for Thomas today as he does lead us in chapel, Lord. I pray to encourage him and help him to say the things that we need to hear. Help me to be able to support and encourage him the way you want me to. I pray that we'll honor you in every way, that we will be led by your spirit and taught by you. I pray that these guys would learn more things today that will help them when it comes time to take the ACT and uh, help them to memorize and meditate and learn these things well so that they can remember that when it comes time for the ACT. So be in charge of us now and get glory through us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going back to math for a while, guys. <clears throat> You know the word mean in math means average, right? Yeah. When we do averages, sometimes they can make these problems kind of complex. You know, you first think of averaging, well, that's pretty easy. And sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it can be a little confusing. So you're working with a total. You're working with a number of items, and you're working with an average. And, of course, to get the average, you divide the total by the number of items. Right? You know that. And I suggest you might want to consider using what we call an average pie. So you, you, you write out the word total on top, number of items, and average on bottom. And what that means is if you divide, you know, total by average, as like it's a fraction, total divided by average, you get the number of items. You divide the total by the number of items, you get the average. And if you multiply the number of items times the average, you get the total. So it kind of gives you a quick clue to how to do these problems. Sometimes you need more than one of those in a given problem. You have to do more than one step. Now, at this point, you guys will need scratch paper again and maybe a calculator if you want to use a calculator. You don't have to have one. And a pencil and paper. And I've got everything you need. Well, except a calculator. I don't have a calculator. But if you've got a calculator, you're welcome to use it. And uh, if you need paper or pencil, there's some up there in that drawer. That front, at the front. <clears throat> You got an answer? Yeah. <laughs> Isaac, I'm not I'm willing to wait if you want me to wait, you know, but but if you want me to go ahead, I'll go ahead. Whatever you want. Okay. How did you do it, Cole? Well, I had up the entire million spent. Okay. Okay. Well, you can. Uh, so you added 18 three times. Is that what you're saying? Because yeah. there's three shirts for $18 and 12 two times. Mm -hmm. So so it's three times 18 and two times 12. And that gives you the total amount. And then you divide by five. Is that what you do? Yeah, total. Yeah, that, that works just fine. Um, 
let me also just kind of illustrate these average pie things I was talking about because this this is one way you can do it. You need two of them this time. So there are three shirts for $18 each. They, of course, they average $18. So three times 18 would be 54. That's the shirts. And then with the ties, and I'm, I'm not saying you need this. I'm just trying to illustrate it for future problems. You got two for $12 each. So the total is 24. So the, so the combined would be 54 24 is 78, is that right? Yeah. And you got five items. So now I'm going to have to figure this one out by dividing 78 by 5, and that's going to be my answer, the average price. I can do it on a calculator, or 5.71 one times, so two left over, 15 and 30, what, 1560, is that right? Let me see, is that what you got? I may have made a mistake yeah. myself. Yeah, fifteen sixty. Yep. You don't have to use the average pie, but for some students it really helps to kind of keep things organized. Make it less likely to make a careless mistake. But the way you said it originally works perfectly, so and the proof is it's probably the way I would have done it too. You know, what I tried to illustrate here is if you get confused about this, you could say, well, let's just average up the prices. If they got the same, you know, it's going to be, if, if you, if you just got one of each, the average would be 15. 18 and 12 is 30, 2 divided into 30 is 15. So if we got the same number of each, the average would be 15. But it's going to be a little more than that because there's more of the $18 items. So it's going to be more than 15. So these three you could throw out. You know, it's one of these. <clears throat> Here's another one. <laughs> Okay. Don't tell me what you got. I got C. Okay, 78. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's all right. One way you can do this, I don't really know right now what it is. 78 for the first six. So the six tests and the average is 78. <clears throat> so the total points would be six times 78. Which is, is that 468? Did I do that right? 6 times 8 is 48, 6 times 7 is 42, 
and 4 makes 46. Yeah. And then you need to add up these four. Calculator can be handy here. However, they've made it kind of easy to do in your head because 8 and 2 add up to 10. So this is like adding 80 and 80 is 160 here. And the same thing over here. This is like adding 90 and 70. We took the 3 and put it over here. It's 90 and 70. That's 150, 160. Right? Yeah. So you got 320 total points so far. Now there's six tests all together. And we've got four of them here. It added up to 320. So that means there are going to be two more tests that add up to the difference between 468 and 320. So it would be 168 to 148. 148, is that right? Yeah. So 148 divided by 2 is 74. <clears throat> so it looks like A is the correct answer there. What can be confusing is that you're, you're comparing six and four here. You got four tests, and those those add up to 320 points. Her first six tests altogether, she got 468 points. <clears throat> so for the last two tests, she has to have 148 points. Divide that by two, and you get 74. Make sense? Uh, we're translating English into algebra here. It's just there's on percent problems. <clears throat> you remember percent means divided by 100. When you see a percent symbol, it means you're dividing a number by 100. So 12% means 12 over 100 or point, 0 0.12, 1200. You can write it either way. <clears throat> of always means multiply. Especially when you work with these kind of problems, but all of you can just always remember it means times you're multiplying. What or how much or how many always represents a variable. <clears throat> so when you see the word what in English, or you see how many in English, you're talking about how much. That, that's where your variable comes in. So you try and, as you translate into math. And these are your verbs, and they always represent an equal sign unless it's an inequality. But for Ralph, we're talking about equations. Is, are, were, did, or does. Those are equals. So you need to recognize this is the same as that. So you can solve these kind of problems.
Need more time, Cole? Okay. This is one of those problems that looks worse than it really is. It's one of those problems that causes me to tell students who hate word problems, and a lot of students hate word problems, and I say, look, read them carefully, because sometimes the word problems, you they'll, they'll, They'll fool you. You'll think because there's words, it must be awful. But in this case, it's not that bad. Five years ago, and you may think, oh, I'm going to have to use that number, but you're not. The price of a new backpack was 80% of today's price. So 80% No, it's not off. It's of. 80% of today's price, not 80% off today's price. That's a good question, and it'd be easy to get confused, but there's a difference in the word of and off. So it's not 80% off. It's 80% of today's price. Now, they say a new backpack costs $21.50 today. That is today's price. That's what they're telling you. So what they're telling you is that five years ago, a backpack was 80% of $21.50. And they ask which of the following is the closest to the price of a new backpack five years ago. They're saying, what is that? 80% of $21.50. So it's 80% of twenty-one fifty. And the word of means times. This is a fraction, or you can change it to a decimal, whichever one you want to do. Uh, it just doesn't matter. I mean, 0.8 if you want to do it that way. You know, 80 hundreds is 0.8 times twenty-one fifty. You could punch that in the calculator, or you could multiply it out, and you'll get the right answer. You might be able to think this way, too. Let's see if this, this may not make sense to you, but students who can think like this can answer this question a lot quicker, maybe without a calculator. They could say, wait a minute. That means it was 20% less than this. 80% of this will be that number. 10% of this would be $2.15, 20% would be 430 So I could subtract 430 from this, and I think I'm going to get 1720 That That might be a quick and easy way. If that didn't make sense, though, you can say 80% of means 0. 0.8 times 2150. And without a calculator, you know, it's not that bad. 5 times 8 is 40, 8 and 4 is uh, 12, 16, 17, 20. Three decimal places, you're going to go with three right here. 1720. So there it is. But sometimes with problems like this, if you notice, you can say, wait a minute, that'd be 20% less than this, and 10% and of that'd be $2.15, 20% would be 430, and you subtract it. That would be a quick way to do it. In fact, when you subtract the 30 from the 50 and you get a 20, there's only one cent over here that has a 20 in there. So it's 21 minus 4, 17. So, whichever is easier, but this is not bad either way. It's just that sometimes you can 
answer a problem really quickly if you happen to see that kind of thing. Work on this one for a few minutes. <clears throat> Okay. The mean J is the only one that makes sense for this problem because 1320 is too much, G one half is too much, H two fifth is too much, three twenty is too little, seven twenty is just too Okay. Much. So you're just trying to use some logic with the answers? Yes. That's good thinking. Um Since she since she paid half, you know you know that he had to pay less than half, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. <coughs> so, All right, well, well, let me let me show you. Yeah, this is more than half. This is half, so you can throw those out immediately yeah. for sure. But let me let me show you the, what they're wanting you to do. They're wanting you to say, okay, five hundred dollars is the original price. She pays fifty percent. That's two fifty, right? Half. Yeah. Jeff pays seventy five. So I'm going to add them together to find out how much the two of them paid. Three hundred twenty five dollars. Still with me? Yeah. That means Ben's got to pay the rest of it. Which is 500 minus 325, 175. All right. The fractional part of 175 of 500 is 175 over 500. Now, your calculator can reduce that, but 25 goes into this seven times. 25 goes into this 20 times. And that's what you said, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have to do it that way. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Did you ever figure out? Did you lose your charger or something for your calculator? No, I'm just forgetting to get out. I charged up a little bit in my testing today, but in the morning I didn't leave it on. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to have a little bit of a boost that way. Well, I. I happen to remember mine, and I charged it up. <clears throat> I did today. <laughs> what did I do down here? Let's see. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, what I did here, I said she paid a half, and Jeff paid seventy-five over five hundreds part, which I reduced to three twentieths. So when you add. 10 20s and 3 20s, you get 13 20s. So he had to pay the rest of it, which would be 7 20s. That's another way to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> That's another way to do it. Yeah. Sometimes there's several ways to do these things. Ratios, treat as fractions. Be careful about the denominator. You may wish to use a ratio box. I may have talked about ratio boxes before. I'm not sure. But here's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
He's, he's got a class of 40 students. The ratio of boys to girls is three to five. Now, a ratio box, <clears throat> I'm going to draw it up here because I'm probably going to put some more stuff on the screen down there, has a top row that divides, you got boys, you got girls, and you got total. And Well, you, you might you, you, you can use something like that. Three to five is the ratio of boys to girls. Three boys for every five girls. That means for every eight students, three of them are boys and five of them are girls, right? Yeah. That's that's what that means. The ratio of boys to girls is three to five. So for every eight students, three of them are boys and five of them are girls. And there are forty students all together. I'm gonna put that down here. In a ratio box, the multiplier goes here. And it's always the same all the way across. So it's got to be a 5 this time. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 3 is 15. And these two should add up to 40. So give me that 40 as a total. They're giving me these numbers here. So I know for every 8 students, 3 are boys and 5 are girls. I don't, I don't have one yet. I'm just, I'm just showing you how the ratios work. Okay. Now, here's a question. Girls make up... What fractional part of the class? Well, you don't need a ratio box for that, but that for every eight students, five of them are girls. No, well, that's boys. Boys is three to five, so girls would be five eighths. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. Boys make up, you already said this, three eighths. And when they ask percent, you just have to change this to a percent by dividing <clears throat> three by eight. Here's a ratio box. That's what I drew up there. On the ACT, they can give you different parts of that ratio box. And you have to kind of learn know how to fill out the rest of it. But it'll really help simplify some of the ratio problems if they get complicated. I'll show you a couple of examples of that in a minute. Well, here's one that's a pretty good example. Uh, let me let you work on it for a few minutes, and then I'll, and then you can try a ratio box. You can remember how I did it, but if you can't, I'll show you again in a minute. Uh, Cole, hold on. Let's stop. It's already 20 after, so let's just stop here, and we'll pick this up next time and give you more time. Anything else? Okay, Father, thank you so much for these guys. Thank you for the way they're working on this stuff. And I pray you'd bless them. I pray you'd help us all to bless you the rest of the day with our decisions. Help us to be encouragement to our families, friends, people here at the school, both students and adults. Help us, Lord, to all honor you well. <clears throat> pray for chapel today that it would go the way you want it to go. Uh, thank you for Cole's willingness to pray anytime, and, and maybe today you want one of the sixth graders to pray, but I pray if that's the case, you'd help me remember to ask them and them to say yes. So, Lord, we just put all this in your hands. We thank you so much for loving us and for being always the same, never changing. Help us to grow to be more and more like Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen.